Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, we're going to be doing a basic overview of the pattern directions and how to read them and what information you need to look for. So you're going to need your pattern with your directions. Let's go ahead and get started. Your pattern directions are going to be located inside the pattern envelope. So we have our pattern pieces on the tissue paper and then this is going to be the pattern directions. Now if it seems like a lot of pages, just realize that on the last page they usually have directions that are going to be in another language such as Spanish or French. I always like to look right above where the pattern directions start because sometimes there's going to be the sewing information box and this is going to give you the basic information that you're going to need to know not only in making your project but then also in reading the directions. So let's just look over this one. So very first thing is telling me what the seam allowances are for this. And they're saying it's 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance are included which means that they're included in the pattern piece and you don't need to add any seam allowance because they've already taken that into account unless otherwise indicated. This is also telling you what your seams are going to be once you start sewing your pieces together. So if they tell you sew a seam, you always assume it's going to be 5 eighths of an inch unless the step that you're working on tells you something differently. Next we're going to have the illustration shading key. So what this is, is telling you how to read the pattern directions or the picture part. So it's telling you how to read this. It's just like when you're doing a pattern layout. So briefly, I'm just going to say it's telling you what it looks like for the right side, wrong side, interfacing and lining. But we're going to go into this a little bit later when we actually get to that part. The next thing I like to do is they give you some tips and tricks in working with fabrics. They can tell you uh, if you have any sort of curved areas in your seams, it doesn't matter if it's curving inward or curving outward, it's always a good idea to clip in these little notches into your seam allowance. You're not actually cutting into the stitches, they're just kind of coming into that and that'll help when you flip the item right side out, these areas will lie a little bit more flatly. Also if you have any pointy seams, you always clip off the corners and then if you're going to have um, an enclosed seam, you always kind of grade it, so you're just cutting it into layers. It just kind of helps everything look a little bit nicer. The next thing I like to do is take a look at the glossary. The glossary is going to tell you some techniques you're going to be doing in the completion of this project. Sometimes when you're reading the directions, it'll just say something like, top stitch neckline, but it won't tell you exactly how to top stitch the neckline. So if you're unfamiliar with this term, you can always refer to the glossary and you can see here it's telling you exactly what it is and how to complete it. Here's another example of a sewing information box. This time is for a quick sew pattern and they call it sewing procedures, but it's basically the same purpose. And I really like the quick sew patterns because they give you a little bit of extra tips and tricks such as they tell you what type of sewing machine needle to use and what type of stitches would be helpful in creating this garment. They also have some glossary terms. Now you'll notice that they don't right away say what the seam allowance is. Sometimes with the quick sew patterns, they do put it in this information, but they also put it at the very beginning of the directions. So in this particular case, they're saying for view A, you're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. As you can see, pattern directions are broken up by steps. So we have the written directions telling you what to do, and then they have a corresponding picture to go with those directions right below it. So in order to read these pictures, I'm going to refer back to the illustration shading key. So we're going to see shaded is going to be the right side. The right side of the fabric, the right side of the garment, it's both the same thing. So if I'm looking at this picture, this portion of the skirt, we're looking at the right side of it. White is going to mean that you're looking at the wrong side of it. If I just scoot this down, Here they're showing a picture of the top of the skirt and you can see we have shaded and then you have white. So the skirt is right side out. You're looking at the right side of the fabric here with the wrong side of the fabric on the inside. This, the white with the dots, that is going to be for interfacing. You can see interfacing here. So it looks like they have a waistband that they're stitching to the top of the skirt and the interfacing is already attached to that waistband. 
We have lining. It's going to have white with these slashes in them. There you go. So there's a picture of looking at the lining. And then the same thing for the underlining, which I don't have any examples of. So usually they show you all of these regardless if they're actually utilizing all these things at once. So maybe your item doesn't actually have a lining, but they'll still show all of them just so you're clear. I know that sometimes reading directions and understanding the directions can be overwhelming. What helps me out is I just take it one step at a time which means I don't try to read through all the directions and try to understand everything at once. I just start with step one and then I get to step two after I finish that. Because sometimes if I look ahead and I try to understand it, I won't understand it until I'm actually trying to do it and I have the pieces that I'm working with in my hand. So if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed, just stop, take a breath and start with the step that you're working on and just concentrate on that. You also need to make sure that you're doing the correct view. Sometimes in, a, in an envelope, there's more than one view and the directions are gonna take care of all the views in that envelope. So you need to pay attention and make sure that you're doing the right one and it's always gonna be at the top. So this starts with dress A, step one. If I'm doing the view B, then I'm not gonna start here. I'm gonna have to look through all the directions and it's actually, let me flip this over, on the back of this page, there we go, jumpsuit B, and then it starts with step one again. And sometimes they break it down where they'll be like, okay, first we're gonna do the bodice, then we're gonna do the pants or the skirt or another portion of it. So it's nice that they break it down like that so you know exactly what you're working on at that point. Sometimes the different views are similar, there's just slight variations to them. So in this particular case, you can see they have views A and B, they're both similar looking pants. So they're doing the steps together. So if you're doing A or B, you would follow these steps, but they may break apart when it comes to doing something different. So here is for both of them, I would just follow along with the steps. And then right here, pocket A. So this is for if you're doing view A, you're gonna start with step five, and you can see over here, right pocket B. If you were doing B, you would actually skip these steps and go right to step number 11. Well, for A, I would start with five, and I would continue on until 10, and then I can go ahead and skip 11 till whenever it changes back, and I'll, I just move it here you'll see left pocket A and B. So again, now they converge and now they're following along the same set of steps again. I just wanna show you one more variation and this is for my quick sew pattern directions which has a similar setup to the ones we've just been looking at. Now for this one, they also have multiple views in one set of directions. You can see I'm looking at view B right here and there's also a view A. Now in this one, you can see Step one says to follow view A steps one through three. So view A and view B are similar in that they share some of the steps. So in this particular case, I'm gonna have to go find view A and do steps one through three, even if I'm doing view B. Once I complete it, then I can go back to step two for view B after I finish step three of view A. So with that, now you have a general idea on how to read pattern directions. So just remember, you can do it, take your time, and good luck. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 150 sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching.